Labosianos, si queréis apoyar al canal podéis usar mi código de creador, Labosiano, en la tienda de Fortnite y otros juegos de Epic Games Y yo os lo agradezco un montón porque así apoyáis muchísimo al canal Muchas gracias gente I've lived next door to Dolmari most of my life, and they've never once done me or mine any harm. Here's what I think of your so-called humanist rally. And your honor Hillarys can go fuck himself. He's a traitor. You all are. When the Azadi finally pack up and leave, we will remember what you've done. Be sure of that. Definitely not a supporter of the National Front, that one. It's been torn into three pieces. Honor and... What? There's a word missing. It's been torn into three pieces. It's disgusting what's going on in there. Them bad-mouthing magicals like they're the problem. The magicals have always lived here. It's the Azadi who've upset the balance of things. You ought to be more careful speaking ill of the Azadi. The walls have ears. Oh, what are they gonna do? Ship me off to one of their re-education camps? I'd like to see them try. They might throw you in Friar's Keep. They wouldn't dare. They respect women, that lot. At least they've got that going for them, unlike those National Front traitors in there. Mark my word. The moment the Azadi leave, the Resistance will hunt down every last one of them and string them up on the city walls. Excuse me. Balance! Where did you come from, eh? I didn't even see ya. What do you want? I don't want no trouble. That piece of paper you tore. Do you have the other half? What piece? The National Front Flyer? Why? Who are you? Someone who's on your side. Well, I don't know. You sound as ardy to me. What do you want that flyer for? Long story. I need it to find a traitor. A traitor to the rebel cause. Oh, right. Well, if it means getting back at that National Front filth, then by all means, take it. And Balance bless you for standing up to those bastards. It's been torn into three pieces. Honor and humanity. It's the slogan used by the National Front. That must be the passphrase I need to get into the meeting. Honor and humanity. Vamos para allá a ver a los nazis. Step aside, brother. God! You snuck up on me. Blood and land. We'll keep this simple. Blood, land, honor and humanity. That's what these people claim to care about. They cling to their slogans like drowning men cling to driftwood. Honor and humanity. Faith and family, brother. Go on through, mate. The meeting's already begun. If you haven't seen Mr. Illyris speak before, you're in for a proper treat. That man is an example to us all. Brothers, 
sisters. Cousins. Brave, humble human folk. Welcome to this meeting of the National Front for Faith and Family. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you for coming here tonight. Thank you. Thank you for the generosity of your time. Thank you for braving these ill-lit occult courts in your tireless search for truth. Yes. Oh, yes. Despite the selfless work of our benefactors, the enemy lurks out there. In the shadows. Look them out. Look. Fear them. The enemy. For they are close. They are everywhere. There's nothing unusual about I that person. There's Do nothing you know? unusual about that person. Ah, he reeks of tobacco. An Azadir variant, unless my nose Filthy. deceives me. It Hammy used to smoke this. To see you standing nothing in particular me. stands out. Standing up for what's good and There's fair. nothing unusual about that Glory, person. Cousins. Her Glory clothes smell strongly of tar and smoke. The light of she the must goddess. be a factory worker. Yes. Her posture yes. is odd. I spoke it's almost like she's tilting slightly to one side. To them about Nothing in particular stands out. The magical. Yes. He yes. smells of lavender yes. oil. Maybe I he's a physician. I said, Listen to His left arm keeps twitching. Your cousins. He appears to Humans have some sort of muscular dysfunction. By the Nothing magical. in particular stands out. Driven to bankruptcy, to moral Goddess. corruption. That man Simple, has a uncomplicated odor. men and women. He can't have changed his clothes or taken a bath in months. Demonic, he must be magical. wearing leather undercarments. Necromancer. They make an un There's nothing unusual said, about that person. We need to make a stand. There's nothing unusual now. about that person. Now. She's humming we need to herself. To rally it's a tune I recognize. A sweet our lullaby. Own. And I said to them, I. I speak regularly with the Azadi. I visit. A map of the southernmost parts of Mercuria. Who's there? Where have you been? Where have you been? At a national front meeting, identifying your turncoat. Uh, it takes a traitor to find a traitor. Think you can point him out for us? I can. Go on then, before we lose him. His breathing is heavy and wet. He smells faintly of camphor, or the pine forests of the north. Maybe lavender oil. Easy, pal. Who are you people? Where are you taking me? Have you got a wrong man? My shift's over. If you're a ghost, just leave me be.
That might be Arn Stont's young widow. That might be Arn Stont's young widow. Pardon me, mistress. I'm looking for the Stont widow. I'm glad you stoned. Who are you? I... I knew your husband. He was a brave man. Knew him? How did you know him? We met in Friar's Keep, mistress. On the night of his death. He saved my life. In return, I granted him death. You granted... You killed my husband. He was dying. They would have tortured him had they found him alive. He asked me to visit you. To tell you that he... He loves you. Oh, don't talk to me of love. He helped you survive. You held my husband's life in your hand. And you killed him? You are despicable. Leave. Before I call the city watch on you. Arn Stont's widow. She wants nothing to do with me. That's the boy I'm supposed to intercept. There are eyes everywhere. I can't risk it. Better to tail him from a distance. I might discover something I can use to intercept him, or lead him away from his route. A runner passing messages between checkpoints. For me, Dar. There's this letter. It's important. Keep it safe and make it quick. I'll see that it's delivered, Dar. What do you want?
way is it again? It's hard to see anything in this light. Right, left. Left's right. The sign reads, Earthrin's Ascent. It says, Watcher's Court. Isn't it left, not right. Right, don't sound right. But hey, signs never lie. Right it is. This down low right. Dead runner's message, sealed with an Azadi mark, probably destined for the tower. I hope this letter was worth a young man's life. It has an official Azadi seal. There's probably... I would have to break the seal. No, the mole would know I'd opened it, and she might not be very happy about that. Our agreement may be forfeit. Next week, I get to leave Marcuria for the first time in months. Goddess, I can't wait. I'm so sick of this shit thing. Exot asset. Oh, next time, maybe. I've got the non magical medicines your body needs. Fully authorized and licensed. No sorcery. The Azadi return to get proverbial back scratched. The mole deceived me. She said the runner would be unharmed and yet they killed him. I can see no reason for his murder other than vengeance and cruelty. How 
can I trust someone like that? He was just a boy. He'd harmed no one. Does she hate the Azadi so much that she's been completely blinded? There's no need to antagonize the Mole. If I want her to give us weapons, I must play by her rules, no matter how deceptive she may be. And my mission... He was just a boy. He'd harmed no one. Does she hate the... Why did you have the runner killed? Good question. Why did Azadi see the need to kill Banda children? Because one day they think Banda children grow to be Banda women and men, and then they come for Azadi. Better make sure this never happened. We have no time for this. I know my people have committed atrocities. We are not the only ones. What's important now is to make sure this never happens again. And we need this one's help to win the war. If she has something on her mind, I should let her speak. One death cannot compensate for another. This is true, Azadi. Retribution may be counterproductive. But your people must also be made to suffer for their crime. They need to see the consequence of their action. They need to feel pain. And that man, that boy, he was in wrong place at wrong time. He's safer this way. He cannot run back and tell on us. Or on you. You talk about making my people suffer. But my people know nothing of what has transpired here in the Northlands. You can't lay this at the feet of all Azadi. How do I make them see? How do I make them understand our loss? The Banda Banta are no more because of Azadi. I can gnash teeth and sharpen claw for many moon. It will not change truth. Your people will never mourn mine. But if I take life, make mother suffer the loss of child, make friend miss friend, Husband, Miss Wife. Maybe then someone will think of mine. Maybe then someone will remember our loss. I'm not sure that's how it works. Perhaps not, Kian of the Azadi. But one can always hope. I may not honor that part of the arrangement, but I will honor most important part. Your resistance will get weapon. All the weapon I have to give. I still need some for my men. Sharpest sword, swiftest axe, strongest bow. But the rest go to your people. Not your people, Azadi. Your people rebel movement, otherwise would be silly. Of course. Thank you. My men will be in touch with your women, and also men. Leave now, Azadi. It's dark and late, and I will sleep. Sleep and dream of happier day in Burrow to the north, where laughter of children fill every tunnel. Dream of friend and of family, while I mourn them all. I should continue my assignment. She's a magical, and she obviously harbors no love for my people. Or for humanity in general. So why isn't she with the rebels? Why haven't you joined the resistance? The shepherd asks same thing. Why not join resistance? How quickly they forget how they treat Banda before. How they look down on us. Call us mole man, mud dweller, snub snout and soil monkey. The magical treat Banda, much the same as human treat Banda, like muck underneath toenail, like filth. I have no love for resistance. I have no use for resistance. But resistance fight Azadi, fight human. So I sell you weapon and food and medicine. And I don't fight resistance. The enemy of my enemy. Well, not friend, but at least not enemy. Whenever she mentions my people, there's hatred and resentment. What did they do to her? Hard to believe that such a little thing can command dozens of men and such... Whenever... The Azadi soldiers. 
They attacked your village? In brightest day, they come and we scurry. Human never good sign. Human always trouble. But never like this. Never like this. We scurry into burrow and we close hatch and we sing softly to earth to make new tunnel. Just in case. Just in case. But Azadi soldier, they have scheme. They are clever. They cover every hole and they throw fire into burrow. Fire that make black smoke. Children, the old, the weak, many suffocate. The rest, we are blind. We cry, we crawl upward, out of burrow. The Azadi wait for us with club and sword and spear. They laugh while they murder. We try plead. They only laugh. I stumble. Sword, snip my ear. Not here so well in here now. I knock head fall into dreamless sleep. When I wake, my world gone. All because of Azadi. All because of your people. Hard to believe that such a little thing can command doesn't... I hear you run the Mercurian underworld. You hear, you hear? Is where I belong. Underworld in Burrow is my natural habitat. But there's more to it than that. You run a criminal empire. Empire? Only human have empire. Only human be empress of empire. Me? I run business. Business in burrow. Underground. Underworld. It's an impressive feat for one so... small. Spoken like big human. Size not matter. Size irrelevant is strength elsewhere. In head, in heart, in mouth. Lucky me, the mole is strong in head, in heart, and especially in mouth. I should continue my assignment. I must leave. Good. Moon moving. Night only has so many hours. Magicals keep their heads high despite the Azadi threat. It's a testament to their resilience. Rooster and Kitten. Ulvik, the barkeep, is friendly with the resistance. The Rooster and Kitten. The Rooster and Kitten. Ulvik, the barkeep, is friendly with the resistance. The Rooster and Kitten. The Rooster and Kitten. Ulvik, the barkeep, is friendly with the resistance.
Alvik doesn't have the most sophisticated or upscale clientele. And I'm sure he's happy about that. At least they're not a raucous or unruly lot. Alvik keeps them in check. There are mostly laborers and dock workers in this bar. It's the perfect cover for the resistance. Alvik doesn't have the most sophisticated or at least they're not a raucous or unruly lot. Alvik keeps them in check. That must be the publican. Alvik, I think his name was. The publican of the rooster and... Kitten. That is the oddest name. Why not the cock and... Oh, yes. He's the proprietor of this establishment. That must be the publican. Alvik, I think his name was. What can I get you, my good man? I have little faith in the quality of the water in this place. But I can at least hold a cup and pretend to be drinking stronger. I'm not here to drink, and I have no use for alcohol. It clouds the mind, confuses the heart, and goddess knows I'm not a drinking man. What does one order to blend properly in with the patrons of this filthy hive? A glass of iced wine, please. Iced wine. Wine and ice. Are you trying to draw attention to yourself? Here's your merry minstrum, da. Your friend. She's upstairs. Friend? Yes. Your friend. She's been waiting. You don't want to keep a woman waiting for too long. There are mostly laborers and dock workers in this bar. It's the perfect cover for the resistance. Free carriage to help me get started. And then I'll head home. Alvik doesn't have them. At least they're not a raucous or unruly lot. Alvik keeps them in check. She must be this friend Alvik was referring to. She does appear to be waiting for someone. My friend, according to the barkeep. I don't know her face. She must be this friend Alvik was referring to. Ah, oh, finally. She does there appear to are. be waiting for someone. Sit. Please. I saved your seat. Sit down. You look quite ridiculous standing there. Smile. We're old friends, remember? I don't remember that at all. Who are you? I'll tell you who I'm not. I'm not with the Resistance, and I'm not a Zadi. If you're not with the Resistance and you're not a Zadi, who are you working for? I'm working for me, and I can either make your life easier or a lot worse. She claims to be my friend, and then she threatens me. Not the best way to begin a conversation. This must be a mistake. The publican was clearly confused. This woman is not looking for me. Who in Shadow's name is this woman? This must be... Who in Shadow's name is this woman? If she's looking for me, I need to know why. I will have your name. You will have my name. So forceful. So like a caged animal. You're a popular man, Kian Alvane. Apostle. Everyone wants a piece of you. I hear there's even a bounty on your head. I'm afraid you've left me at a disadvantage. I'll leave in the battlefield. I have as many names as I have friends. And enemies. Some call me Anna. What do you want from me, Anna? I like the emphasis. You're a clever boy. I want your assistance, but not right now. You're meeting someone. I'd hate to get in the way. How I just you... wanted a chance to introduce myself, and now I have, so it's time to leave. Let me up sometime. You can find me at this table most evenings. If not, Olvik can pass a message. Big man behind the bar. Wears an apron with a cock, a rooster, and a kitten on it. Can't miss him. Be seeing you, friend. Wait. How did you see through my veil? What? You shouldn't be able to recognize me on sight. 
Unless you know me intimately. I don't know what you're talking about. Be seeing you, Alvani. Vaya con la Ana. Funny. I don't think I quite understand her, but I do like her. Enu's a great counterbalance to Liko, and I know he would do anything for her. Enu, our Zidling. She's a great asset to the Resistance. I really like Enu. She's quick, smart, capable and funny. Always angry, but a good man to have by your side in a dangerous situation. I trust Liko not to kill me, for as long as the Resistance needs me. After that... He will turn on me. I'd better be ready. I remember the day I killed his father. And I remember him. He was as old as me. Just a boy. Afraid and angry. Always angry. But a good man to have by your side in a dangerous situation. Who was that? What? Who? Where? That woman. Who was she? A mystery woman, huh? I don't know. I'm not a guy. I don't go looking at every woman who passes by. Liko? Uh-huh. Did you see a mystery woman? No. God, you need to get out more. Is this place safe for the two of you? What? Oh, you mean this. The face. The fur. This is a safe place. But Azadi drink here. All that keeps it all under control. Also, magicals are still allowed passage in the city as long as they have valid passes and carry no weapons. Visibly. You have passes? Sure do, but it's... We shouldn't push our luck. It's time to go. Yeah, that. Come on, Kian. You passed Liko's test. You're okay. We'll head back to HQ. Test? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, um, Liko? I told you I would not trust you. And now you do. No. <laughs> I merely distrust you a little less. But you did well. I won't kill you. Yet. That's him being real friendly, you know. Hugs? No? Yeah, me neither. Okay, we really need to go. Come on. So what did your mystery woman look like? She had long auburn hair and light freckled skin. She dressed like a ranger. Of course she did. Your type, huh? I don't really have a... a type. Really? A guy like you, I thought you'd be super choosy. I'm not a... God. I've not had much time for... for women in my life. Leaping leapers, are you joking? How old are you? Look at you, you're gorgeous. But how did that come out of my mouth? Leaping leapers? Nope, just nope. You do like women though, right? Shadow, take me. Not that there's anything wrong with, you know. In fact, I could have set That's you quite up enough, with. Anna. I don't know, this just happens. It's a sickness. I open my mouth and. Blah! It's really disturbing. Passes. What are you doing out so late? Drinking. Dancing. Just drinking. Next time, go drinking inside the wall. We don't need your kind at our bars. <clears throat> no, uh, you're absolutely right. You really, really don't. Goodbye.
dancing. Right then and there, it felt like an appropriate answer. Tell me again about this test. I expected you to run straight to your mistresses, Armani. You may be of some use to us. For a while, I will still kill you. Nothing you can do will ever repay your debt to my family and people. Cheerful. Debt? Never you mind, Zidling. This is between the Apostle and myself. Zidling? Really? Really? You know I'm not actually a Zidling, right, Glumbum? I'm of age and I've already been with several that men. Mouth thing again, Zidling. <laughs> Thanks. Where is everyone? In bed, I guess. It is late. He's right. It's never this empty. Something's wrong. We should hurry. We need to keep moving. We don't know how many of them there are. <sighs> good catch, Kian. That was a good catch, wasn't it, Liko? He survived. It was acceptable. <laughs> uh, he's totally warming up to you. Thank the gods of old, our boat is still here. Ladies first. That means you guys. You guys were the ladies. It was a joke. Fine, I'll go first. I laughed. On the inside. <laughs> you would have exploded. I don't think your body can handle laughter, Lego. I'm glad you're all back safely. How did it go? Kian was awesome. He even saved our lives. I would have caught the arrow. Yeah, I know, but Kian did, and it was awesome. Any news of the informer? We brought him here for questioning. Was that wise? He knows our location now. That won't be a problem for long. Maybe not for you, Liko, but it is a problem for me. We don't just execute our prisoners once we're done with them. How did the rest of your mission go? Alvani followed our instructions. He completed his task to our satisfaction. The end result was adequate. Hey, whoa. Don't get all mushy on us now, Liko. I'm glad to see that the three of you can work together. While you were away, we received some news. Bob, who can see? Right you are, ma'am. As most of you know, the first of the six has been due to arrive in Mercuria for weeks now. Well, she's arrived. Their cloud ship docked with the tower not an hour ago. And she ain't alone. The first is the Azadi's highest authority. Of course she won't travel alone. Aye, there's that, but I'm not talking about bodyguards or handmaidens or the like. No. She's got some real interesting company. One General Hami, alongside a Mother Utana. What did you say? Hami, General, Utana, Mother. Do you know them? I do. They're with the first of the six. So word has it. How do you know this? Do you have eyes inside the tower? Not inside, no. On the ground, here and there, close enough. Some tell secrets for money, or to protect their own secrets. Some are sympathetic to the Magicals. And some are unhappy with Saya and her lapdog Vamon. 
They run the city still. Word is, they're intimate. A sister and a soldier. That's a capital crime. Well, that, with Saya ruling the church and Vamon, the state here in Mercuria, there's not much anyone can do. If anyone can, it will be General Hami and Mother Atana. You know them well, then? You knew. You knew they were coming. And you knew my history with them. That's why you freed me from... Naane! Finally. What news from Miria? Liko, Shepard. The rebuilding progresses and... Alvani, you are... on your feet again. The traitor. She betrayed the Resistance to save herself. And now she's come back. Don't they know who she is and what she's done? I must tell them before she flees. The traitor. What's that witch doing here? They must not know who she is and what she's done. If I tell them now she's dead, I must confront her in private. Rebuilding... Uh, apologies, Shepard. I'm tired from my travels. I would like to retire to my quarters. Of course. Let's speak tomorrow. That goes for all of us. The hour is late. We will reconvene after breakfast. You knew they were coming. The General and the Mother. That's why you sent Captain Bakim to Friar's Keep. That's why you freed me. Kian. Liko was right. You're using me. All those words about being a symbol, about being important to the Resistance. Does the one exclude the other? You are a symbol. You are a warrior. And now, you're a rebel. I knew they were coming, Utala and Hami. And I knew from our spies in Sardir that you were bound to them both. We saw an opportunity, and we sent Barkin to free you. You can see that we're desperate, Kian. Afraid, alone. Most humans have already given up, given in, become comfortable with this new world, with the Azadi. Many have forgotten about the Magicals, or chosen to forget. They carry on their lives, even if we cannot. We few are all that remains of the Resistance. If we lose, all is lost. Our lives, our hopes, our entire future. Lost. To darkness. I will do anything to save my people. Make terrible sacrifices, tell lies, anything. Wouldn't you, Kian? So yes, you are a tool. And you are a symbol. Our secret weapon. The key to our survival. It's been a long and tiring day, and there's still much I need to do. We can continue our conversation another day. questions about certain people, magical, suspected weapons. But I didn't tell him everything. I swear, I only did what I had to do to protect my family. Please, please believe me, I have no choice.
I've been expecting you. Why did you protect me in there? Why not tell them what I did? I have no intention of protecting her secrets, but her selfless actions granted me a second chance. At the very least, she deserves to be heard. I only had a moment to decide. That's not enough time to weigh a person's life. It was her portal that helped me escape the keep. She healed my wounds. She knew I might expose her, and yet... Yet she saved my life. I called her a traitor. But are we so different? I, I only had a moment to decide. It was her portal that helped me escape. Why did you save me? Because you were sick. Because you needed me. Because without my help, you would have died. Knowing I might tell everyone what you did. That made no difference. The Resistance needs you. So I did my part. You're still a traitor. I did betray the Resistance. But before you decide what to do with me, will you hear me out? I will base my decision on what I know and what I think is right, not on her words. Everyone deserves to be heard. Maybe the others won't give her that opportunity. Speak. When I gave you the location of our base and betrayed April, I thought I was sacrificing one person to save everyone else. But many died because of my actions. This has haunted me. I have questioned my motives. Did I sell her out to save the shipment of food and medicines? Without it, many would have suffered. The old, the sickly, the children. Or did I betray the resistance to save my own skin? I would have been executed by the Azadi. I truly don't know. Perhaps it was a little of both. Perhaps things are not so black and white. We can never truly know the consequences of our actions. If you keep my secret, I can continue to help. I am of real value to the Resistance, despite my crimes. Turn me in, and more will suffer. But justice, for what it's worth, will be served. It's your choice to make, Alvane, not mine. What is your decision? What will you do with me? She's important to the Resistance. Without her, they will be even weaker. I must protect her secret, whatever the consequences. However she chooses to justify her betrayal, regardless of her importance to the Resistance, the others deserve to know. Her fate needs to be in their hands. She's important to the Resistance. Without her, they will be even weaker. I'll be watching you. I promise you won't regret your decision. I will live to repent my sins and serve the Resistance. I'm in your debt, Alvane. Always and forever. You saved my life, but I may still call on you one day to do something for me. I'll be ready. Había que hacerlo por Enu. <laughs> the first is on her way. Has she mentioned him? I don't think so. You do know she's brought General Harmy and that mother with her. Utana, it means nothing. The general was due back in the Northlands. What about the mother? She's rumored to be next in line for the seat. She wants to be involved. She was also the bleeding heart who practically raised Alvare. She sponsored his whole education. Right. She could be a problem, but what can we do? We make sure none of them know Kian is alive and with the resistance. Mistress, your presence here honors us. Sister Sire. This is an impressive edifice. It appears your work here has borne fruit. We believe so, mistress. We welcome you to Mercuria and the Northlands. Anything you need, you let me know. Mother, I'm pleased to see you as well. To have the both of you here is a great honor. Quite. 
The Seed wants to know how the mission goes, how the Northlanders are handling the transition, and how many of them have chosen to embrace the light of the Goddess. We will speak of this, and much more. For now, we have prepared dinner for all of you. I hope you will join me. Right. Well, I am starving. The food on those cloud ships... General, I did not expect to see you back so soon. Neither did I. What's this I hear about Kian? Yes, what of the Apostle? It pains me to inform you that Alvane died in a riot. He was detained under penalty of death until your visit, Mistress. Unfortunately, the rebels snuck their agents into the prison. They cut him down and burned his body. Goddess guide his immortal soul to the First Mountain. With every respect to you and your seat, Mother, Alvani was a traitor. He betrayed the cause, and he... May I remind you, sister, that the Apostle was never relieved of his title and should be addressed properly? And may I also remind you that without a proper trial and judgment by the first of the six, his so-called treason remains an accusation and nothing more. Now that he's... no longer with us, we may never know the truth. But our people will not be told that the Apostle was a traitor. Mother. How did you say he died, Commander? Uh, stabbed during a riot. They burned his body, hopefully after he'd bled out. We weren't able to retake the prison until the next morning. I will need to see the keep for myself, Commander, and interview the guards and prisoners. Certainly. I shall make arrangements for you to visit in a couple of days. Don't bother, Bamon. I'll go there tomorrow. You don't have to trouble yourself. I'm sure you have better things to do. As you wish, Mir. How is the engine progressing? The engineers are working day and night to connect the tubes. We expect to be able to switch it on according to schedule. Good. I have brought the final instructions from Sadir. The architect will send any remaining modifications by cloud ship. And when the Prophet returns, he will inspect the engine before we switch it on. Have you not spoken with him? Not for many months. But he will be here when our Goddess-given task is complete. Only he will know how to bring it to life and to interpret the messages from the engine. Of course. Please, will the two of you accompany me to the dinner table? I'm sure the kitchen is worried the food will turn cold before we are seated. <laughs> General. Commander. Until tomorrow, sister. Mother? My lady? Vamon, if you'll dine with me in my quarters? Of course, Mia. Tell me again what happened at the keep. Mm -hmm.